before we start, I'd just like to say, I've uh, I've started streaming. You can find my Twitch link in the description. I typically stream on weekends and sometimes in the middle of the week, but I'll let y'all know if that happens. So just stay in the Discord, keep updated on that, come hang out. But anyway, I've run into a bit of, not an issue, but an interesting problem with the Ragnarok. It needs a lot of power. It also needs a lot of shields. <clears throat> That's because Robaz covered the damn thing with shields entirely. Like, he has the entire hole with just shields covering it. So, of course, in keeping to the originalness, the purity of the Ragnarok, I'm going to add shields to it. And that's going to end up costing quite a chunk of power. I believe fully shielding the hole. I did the math is like minimum 10k power and probably upwards of like 15-20k because it's just so massive. So, I've come up for, with a solution. The Ragnarok is a broadsider. Broadsiders only point one side at the enemy. The other side of the shields don't need to be on. So why don't we make them intelligent and reactive? And if you're watching this little background video, you can see here that I've done that. I've created shields that are reactive and try and stay pointed at the enemy at all times. Now these aren't fine-tuned at all. You could very easily tune these such that they're like almost exactly pointed. Like you could tune it to where like the right side and the front side's on when the enemy's at 45 degrees, etc. But this is a very rudimentary setup. I'll probably dig deeper into the, the wrenching on it once I install this on the Ragnarok. But this is going to be a, a nice, cool feature of the Ragnarok's defense. So how did I do this? Well, um, the only way I know how to do this is bread. If you don't know breadboards, just take five seconds and learn them. They're so simple when you really just take a couple moments to read what each part does and what you can do with them. And today, I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's get into it. So, as is typically always step one when you're trying to <clears throat> assign unique breadboard functions to individual blocks, you need to name your blocks. This is just so that you can filter what you're actually changing the values of. If you don't know how to name your blocks, the default keybind is a shift plus N, but in case your keybinds have changed, it should be somewhere in here. Do, 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 do. I don't even know where it's at because I've never looked at it. Right here. Rename block. So just look for this keybind. It's directly under build. See what that is. Go to your shield projector, shift N, and name every shield projector something that makes sense. Obviously, this one is on the port, so it's called left. This one's on the bow, so it's called front, etc. You get it. Right, back. So once you do that, then we can start accessing these shield blocks as variables. So we'll ignore what I've done thus far. The first thing we need is to access the shield block itself. So you use the generic block setter to do this. The generic block setter is just a breadboard component that looks for <clears throat> blocks that are modifiable on your ship and brings you back a list of them. In this case, there's a whole bunch, but what we want is planar shield projector. And what you're looking for is effect strength. You should configure all your other shield properties just by hand. That's just how you should do it. Effect strength is really the only one that matters. So what do we do with this? Well. We could very easily set, you know, the strength of every shield by just connecting this to, to themselves and that turns everything on, but we don't want to do that. So let's account for the left side first, just because it's, it's what I chose to do. So we're now filtering by left. So we've chosen the left side shield and we have access to its effect strength. How should we change that? Well, if we want to change it to turn on when the enemy is on the left side of the ship, which is what we want to do, we need, and this is a feature of the AI breadboard. You need to use the AI breadboard to do this. You can't do this if you don't have the AI breadboard, I'm pretty sure. 
So you need a primary target info, which is an AI component. In your primary target info, you have a bunch of things such as, is there a target? Target distance, target altitude, target bearing, target position as a vector, and target velocity as a vector. I'm not going to explain all these. The only one we need today is bearing. So bearing is literally where the target is relative to the front of the ship in 360 degrees. That's all it is. So if I print that out, target bearing, you'll see the my target is actively circling me, so it's changing its bearing all the time. It's currently on my left side by about 34, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. degrees. Okay, so we have that. So what can we do with that? Well, this is the way I did it. There's probably better ways. All the breadboard warriors probably know a better way already. I'm just showing you the way I did it. I want to take this, and I'm just using a multiply just because um, in the actual script, I had to bring this down a million times. So I'm just using multiply to split this, this output here, which is bearing. So if you time something by one and use the multiply component, you can split it off into more outputs significantly easier. That's how I'm doing it. <clears throat> and we want a threshold threshold, which is here in new component inventory. And we want two of them. So we want to say if the target's on our left side, that is to say its angle is between 0 and negative 180, that means it's to our left, then we want to turn our shields on. So, 0, oh, that's 9, hit the wrong key button. Trigger below, 0 and negative 180, we'll go 179.9 just for exactness, and trigger above. So now we're reading and we're saying if target is on our left side, then we need to do something. Oh, this didn't work right because I didn't choose negative. And the easiest way to group these together to get a binary output is a logic gate. Just use an AND gate. This just says if both inputs are true, output a binary one. So here we see both inputs are true and we output one. And then, in order to get the shield to turn off when the enemy isn't there, we need to use a switch. All a switch does is like a literal switch circuit. When it's closed, it passes a one value. When it's open, it passes a different value. So uh, this is the closed value, the top input, and the open value is set in the switch itself. This is the switch single signal. It's typically set to be close if the signal is 1 and open if it's 0. And if we're close, oh my goodness, <laughs> if we're close we want to pass 10 because that's full strength of a shield. And then you just connect it up. So I'm going to remove the one for left that I have here just to show you that this works. And our target should be approaching our left side. And there it goes. It already sees it and it has switched on. So it's going to go from 0 all the way to 180. And then once it breaks 180, it's going to turn off. So we'll just wait for that to happen. Do, 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 do. And this is super simple stuff. If you just follow my script, I'm going to show you the, um, the full breadboard script at the end. And I'm even going to post this on the Steam Workshop, this platform, with this breadboard. So you can use this for yourself if you want. And this is super easy to implement. This will save you a nice amount of power on your big broadsiders. I can highly recommend, and I think it's cool. Especially if you have it like your shields are somewhat visible. My goodness. It's there, you can see it turned off. If your shields are somewhat visible, this is a really cool party trick. But yeah, there it is. So I'll just grab this guy. Control Shift C to duplicate. And I want my original code back on. And I don't want this. So here we see I've gone a step above. And I have just made this account for front, back, left, right. That way we always have a shield pointing at it. When doing uh, back and front, it's easier to just absolute your value. Because 
dealing with negatives with front and back just makes it a little wonkier, so I just absolute them. But yeah, here you go. I'll leave this on screen for a second if you want to like copy it or look at it. So yeah, this will be on the Steam Workshop. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you learned something quick, something easy, and a really cool little trick you can add to your ships. If you like this video, you want to see more quick tutorials like this, just let me know in the comments. Usual like and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.